Hello, everybody. We are on chapter four in the city of Ember. We are part way into the chapter on page 62. I hope you'll come again, said Clary. You can come whenever. You can come anytime. Lina said thank you and turned to go. But just outside the greenhouse door, she heard running footsteps and a strange, high, sobbing sound. Or rather, she heard sobs and then a wail, sobs and then a shout, and then more sobs getting louder. She looked back toward the rear of the greenhouse, toward the trash heaps. Clary, she called. There's something. Clary came out and listened too. Do you hear it? Yes, said Clary, and she frowned. I'm afraid it's, it's someone who... She peered toward the crying noise. Yes, here he comes. Her strong hand gripped Lena's shoulder for a moment. You better go, she said. I'll take care of this. But what is it? Never mind, just go on. But Lena wanted to see. Once Clary had walked away, she ducked behind the tool shed. From there she watched. The noise came closer. Out beyond the trash heaps, a figure appeared. It was a man running and stumbling, his arms flapping. He looked as if he was about to fall over, as if he could hardly pick up his feet. In fact, as he came closer, he did fall. He tripped over a hose and crumpled to the ground as if his bones had dissolved. Clary stooped down and said something to him in a voice too low for Lena to hear. The man was panting. When he turned over and sat up, Lena saw that his face was scratched and his eyes wide open in fright. His sobs had turned into hiccups. She recognized him. It was Sag Moral, one of the clerks in the supply depot. He was a quiet, long-faced man who always looked worried. Clary helped him to his feet. The two of them climbed slowly towards the greenhouse, and as they got closer, Lena could hear what the man was saying. He spoke very fast in a weak, trembly voice, hardly stopping for breath. Well, sure, I could do it. I said to myself, just one step after another, that's all, one step after another. I knew it would be dark. Who doesn't know that? But then I thought, well, dark can't hurt you, and I'll just keep going. And I thought, he stumbled and he sagged against Clary. Careful, Clary said. They reached the door of the greenhouse, and Clary struggled to open it. Without thinking, Lena darted out from behind the tool shed and opened it for her. Clary shot her a quick frown, but said nothing. Sage didn't stop talking. But then the farther I went, the darker it was, and you just can't keep walking in the black dark, can you? It's like a wall in front of you. And I kept turning around to look for the lights of the city because that's all there was to see. And then I'd said to myself, don't look back, keep moving. But I kept tripping and falling, and the ground is rough out there, and I scraped my hands. He held up one hand and stared at the red scratches on it and the drops of blood that oozed from it. They got him into Clary's office and sat him down in her chair, and he rambled on. Be brave, I said to myself. I kept going and going, but then all of a sudden I thought, anything could be out here. There could be a pit a thousand feet deep right in front of me. There could be something that bites. I've heard story. Rats as big as garbage bins, and I had to get out of there. So I turned around and I ran. Never mind, said Clary. You're all right now. Lena, get him some water. Lena found a cup and filled it from the sink. Oh, my goodness. In the corner, Sage took it with shaking hands and drank it down. What were you looking for, Lena asked. She knew what she would have been looking for if she'd gone out there. She thought about it countless times. Sage stared at her. He seemed to have a puzzling over her question. He seemed to have to puzzle over her question. And finally he said, I was looking for something that could help us. What could it be? I don't know, like a stairway that leads somewhere maybe, or a building full of... I don't know useful things. But you didn't find anything or see anything? Lena asked, disappointed. Nothing, nothing. There is nothing out there. His voice became a shout and his eyes looked wild again. Or if there is, we can never get to it. Never. Not without a light. He took a long, shaky breath and for a while he stared at the floor. And then he stood up. I think I'm all right now. I'll be going. With uncertain steps, he went down the path and out the door. Well, said Clary, I'm sorry that happened while you were here. I was afraid you might be scared. That's why I told you to go. But Lena was full of questions, not fear. She had heard tales of people who tried to go out into the unknown regions. She thought about it herself, in fact. She wondered the same things as Sage. She had ma imagined making her way out into the dark and coming to a wall in which she would find the door to a tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel would be another city, the city of light that she had dreamed about. 
All it would take was the courage to walk away from Ember and into the darkness, and then to keep going. It might have been possible if you could carry a light to show the way, but in Ember there were no such things as lights you could carry with you. Outside lights were fixed to their poles or to the roofs of their house. Inside lights were set into the ceiling or had cords that had to be plugged in. Over the course of Ember's history, various clever people had tried to invent a movable light, but all of them had failed. One man had managed to ignite the end of a stick of wood by holding it against an electric burner on his stole. He'd run across the city with the flaming stick, planning to use it to light his journey. But by the time he got to the trash heaps, his torch had gone out. Other people latched onto his idea. One woman who lived on Dead Lock Street, very near the edge of the city, managed to get into the unknown regions with her flaming stick. But the stick quickly burned, and before she could go far, the flame singed her hand and she threw it down. Everyone had tried to penetrate the unknown regions, had come back within a few hours, their enterprise a failure. Lena and Clary stood by the open door of the greenhouse and watched Sage shuffle towards the city. As he moved the trash heaps, two guards who had been sitting on the ground got to their feet. They walked over to Sage and each of them took a hold of his arms. Uh-oh, said Clary. Those guards are always looking for trouble. But Sage hasn't broken any law, said Lena. It doesn't matter. They need something to do. They'll get some fun out of scaring him. One of the guards was shaking his finger at Sage and saying something in a voice almost loud enough for Lena to hear. Poor man, said Clary with a sigh. He's the fourth one this year. The guards were marching Sage away now, one on either side of him. Sage looked limp and small between them. What do you think is out there in the unknown nether regions, Clara? Clary stared down at the ground where the light from the greenhouse was casting long, thin shadows of them both. I don't know. Nothing, I guess. And do you think Ember is the only light in the dark world? Clary sighed. I don't know, she said. She gave Lena a long look. Her eyes, Lena thought, looked a little sad. They were a deep brown, almost the color of the earth in the garden bed. Clary put a hand in her pocket and drew something out. Look, she said. In the palm of her hand was a white bean. Something in the seed knows how to make a bean plant. How does it know that? I don't know, said Lena, staring at the hard, flat bean. I know because it has life in it, Clary said. It knows because it has life in it, Clary said. But where does the life come from? What is life? Lena could see that the words were welling up in Clary now, and her eyes were bright. Her cheeks were rosy. Take a lamp, for instance. When you plug it in, it comes alive. In a way, it lights up. That's because it's connected to a wire that's connected to the generator, which is making electricity. Though don't ask me how. But a bean seed isn't connected to anything. Neither are people. We don't have plugs and wires that connect us to generators. What makes living things go inside them is inside them somehow. Her dyke dark eyebrows drew together over her eyes. What I mean is, she said finally, something is going on that we don't understand. They say the builders made the city, but who made the builders? Who made us? I think the answer must be somewhere outside of Ember. In the unknown regions? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. She brushed her hands together in a time to get back to work way. Clary, said Lena quickly, here's what I think. When her heart sped up, she hadn't told this to anyone before. In my mind, I see another city. Lena watched to see if Clary was going to laugh at her or smile in that overly kind way. But she didn't, so Lena went on. It isn't like Ember. It's white and gleaming, and the buildings are tall, and they sort of sparkle. Everything is bright, not just inside the buildings, but all around them, too, even up in the sky. I know it's just my imagination, but it feels real, and I think it is real. Clary said, hmm. And then she said, where would such a city be? That's what I don't know, or how to get to it. I keep thinking there's a door somewhere, maybe out in the unknown regions, a door that leads out of Ember, and then behind the door is a road. Clary shrugged her shoulders. I don't know, she said. I have to get back to work, but here, take this. She handed Lena the bean seed and took a little pot from a shelf, scooped some dirt into it, and handed the pot to Lena too. Stick the bean in here and water it every day, she said. It looks like nothing, like a little white stone, but inside it, there's life. That must be a sort of clue, don't you think? If we could just figure it out. Lena took the seed in the pot. Thank you, she said. She wanted to give Clara a hug, Clary a hug, but she didn't, in case it would embarrass her. Instead, she just said goodbye and raced back toward the city. End of chapter 